Hallelujah. Say we need a word from you. We need to to hear from you. If we don't, if we don't, don't we? the Lord of glory. Hallelujah. He speaks even in a calm voice. Hallelujah. Come right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God Almighty, we thank you for the word that is about to be spoken to your children. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless. Oh God, that someone will hear your word. Oh God, and say I'm healed. Someone will hear your word. Oh God, and that broken heart will be mended. We thank you right now for the word. In Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Greetings from our host pastor, Pastor Cecil Harper, and his lovely wife, uh, Mother Harper. Greetings to our pastor, Dr. Colley, and to assistant pastor, uh, Pastor Ricketts. Amen. Assistant pastor. Amen. To all the saints, in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our soon coming king. Amen, amen, amen. I hope you don't mind me talking to you for a minute or two. Amen. I, 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 
I see you tonight that you have already jumped. Hallelujah. And some of you is probably tired. Amen. Or you don't, don't go sleep on me, but if you can just listen to the word of God. Amen, amen, amen. I, I believe that sometime we come into the house of God, and if the preacher don't scream you out, amen, and make you jump all over, then sometimes people miss the word because they think that the word must come with a bunch of jumping. Amen, amen. But I do believe that tonight God speaks even in a calm voice, a still, small voice. Amen, amen. And as I stand before you tonight, I still question, I'm like, Doc, what happened to all the preachers in Toronto? Amen, 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 amen. Amen, God is good. Amen, but I can assure you tonight, amen, that I went before God and I seek a word. Amen. And I believe that tonight as we deal with restoration, amen, tonight gave me a simple topic. What is your expectation? What is your expectation? Because we're all talking about being restored and all the things that we need to do to be restored. But what is your expectation for this restoration? Do you even have an expectation? Do you just come every Sunday and every night and you expect someone else to preach you happy, jump you happy? But what is your expectation? Tonight for the time, I will be reading from 2 Kings chapter 5. Amen, and I'll be reading verses 1, and I'll pick up back again around verse 10 and 11. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honorable. And because by him the Lord has given deliverance unto Syria, he was also a mighty man in valor. But he was also a leper. Verse 10. And Elisha sent a message unto him and said, Go and wash in Jordan seven times. And thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. And Naaman was wrath and went his way and said, Behold, I thought he was surely going to come out to me. He was going to stand. He was going to call on the name of his Lord, of his God. He was going to strike his hands over this place and he was going to recover the leper. That's what Naaman expected to happen. That's what Naaman thought was going to happen. A lot of time we come into the presence of God and we have an expectation of what we think is supposed to happen and what God wants to happen in his house. And we walk in with a preconceived notion of how the Holy Ghost is supposed to operate. We walk into the presence of God and God, they expect you to set it up a certain way and if it's not that way, then it's not God. What is your expectation? Because it's not done the way you want it to be done. And we're talking about restoration, restoring the man, restoring the church. What is your expectation for the church? What is your expectation for your salvation? What is your expectation for yourself? I do believe the Holy Ghost tells me tonight that some people come in dark and they come in, they don't have an expectation for the Holy Ghost. We have expectation for others all the time. Just like a young baby. They can't talk, so they can't tell you when they're hungry, but they expect you to feed them. And if you don't, they're going to cry until you get annoyed and do it. 
You have an expectation that if you work, you're going to get paid. You have an expectation, I get up at 7 o'clock in the morning, I work for 8 hours, at the end of the day, I need pay. It's an expectation. But many times, we think that others have to fulfill your expectation for you. And you don't even have one for yourself. Many times we walk into the presence of God. And when we come into the presence of God, you not even come with a hallelujah. You come and you wait until the praise team sing you happy. And if the praise team didn't do it the way you like it, then church wasn't good today. I come in with the expectation that Doc is going to preach until everyone starts jumping and sweating. And Doc, you didn't do that. You stood there and you preached. And they said, what was Doc doing this morning? It wasn't their expectation. It didn't meet their expectation. We see in the Bible where Mary and Martha was, Jesus went to visit them. And Jesus was at the house. And Mary decided to go sit down and listen to Jesus and talk with Jesus. But Martha had to be in the kitchen preparing everything. She had an expectation that Mary was going to help with the food. So she walked out to Jesus and said, Master, send Mary over to help me. I'm the only one in the kitchen preparing the food. And Mary is sitting here. She had an expectation. She thought that Mary would have helped. Many of you, when you get married, you have an expectation. You thought that that husband was going to be. You thought that wife was going to be. But then you enter that marriage and you realize that they don't meet your expectation. What do you do? Do you pack up and run out of that marriage? We see Lazarus. A lot of time when you cry, you expect people to just run to you. But you'll never dare help someone else in the house of God. But we see Lazarus as he lies there and he was sick and he sent a message unto uh, Mary, sent a message to Jesus and said, Jesus, the one you love is sick. Come now. Come now. She had an expectation that Jesus was going to come. The Bible says that Jesus delayed. He stayed there. Four days later, he showed up. I believe that Mary was mad. That's why he never ran out to meet him. What are you doing now? He's dead. But that was her expectation. You should have run to me when I sent you that message. The expectation. We see Job. He questioned God. Job, nothing that he has done. He was a righteous man. And Job, a tragedy happened in his life. And everything was taken from Job. And Job questioned God. Can you believe it, Doc? 38 chapters later, before he showed up and said, Job, where were you? 38 chapters later. Some of you, you come in church. Oh, God Almighty, you come with no expectation. You're sick, and you not even believe that God can heal you. But yet you want the man of God to work a miracle and heal you. If you don't believe yourself, how is God going to do it for you? We see King David, he cried unto God, and he said, How long, O Lord, will you forget about me? How long will you hide your face from me? These were righteous men, good men. But they had an expectation from God that God was going to do something for them. So I ask you the question tonight what is your expectation when you come into the presence of God? What do you want from God? 
do you just come because Dr. Tully said it is a uh, um, youth, youth convention. You must be here. So you are commanded to be here. But you have no expectation. You just show up. I can't tell you you're wasting your time. If you just walk into the presence of God, you have no expectation from God. You have no expectation for yourself. And you walk into the presence of God. And for the very mere fact that somebody has to pump you to say, Hallelujah! 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 And they let you go after they wine you up a bit. And you do one of this. And then you stop. And they have to wine you again. And you do one of this. And then you stop. Ah, what's your expectation for God? I don't expect somebody to wind me happy in the house of God. I come, I know the God I serve, I know the God that I depend upon, and when I say hallelujah, I know the God I'm saying hallelujah to. One of the very young people wrote a song that I listen to in the all the times. You need a relationship with Jesus. You need to know him for yourself. Oh, God Almighty, can I say that I'm tired of the apostolic church trying to put on a show to please people when God does not work with a show. God expects you to come into his presence, lift up holy hands, and magnify him. He doesn't work on a show. What did he say to the Pharisees? You hypocrites, a sign I will not show you. Because you come and you just expect somebody to whine you in the presence of God. And oh God, like a bubble head, hallelujah, after they whine you and you get unwind and you stop again. Ha, The Holy Ghost doesn't work on battery. The Holy Ghost doesn't work on winding. It's the Holy Ghost that lives within you. It's not dead. It's not dead, my bishop. Many come into the house of God and they think that it's like Job or he's still in the grave. But the Holy Ghost is alive and well. Oh God Almighty, all it requires of you is to live a holy life. Come before the presence of God and lift up holy hands. We have a problem in the church where there's a gap between expectation and your actual experience. Some people in the presence of God have never experienced the healing power of God. So dark until tomorrow, if you preach all night, they won't understand what healing is. They never had to weep over a dead body that belongs to them. So they'll never understand what your sorrow is. So there's a gap between the actual experience of God Almighty and the expectation. But the only thing that can fill that gap, it's the Holy Ghost. Young people, nothing can fill that gap for you. The Holy Ghost is what you need. And you don't need someone to whine it for you. The Holy Ghost propel itself. Said fast and pray. Oh God Almighty, we're living in a church today. When you go to fast and service, there is a one or no young people. And then they come in on Sunday morning. Oh God Almighty, and they expect the hardest service ever. And you didn't give them a show like they expect. They said our service was so boring today. But what was your expectation? You come in anyhow, anyway. And then you expect God to run through you. I won't pour my clean wine into dirty vessels. So how? It's a very hypocritical behavior. And, and don't think I'm only preaching to the young people. Because we have adults that come into the presence of God. 
and they come with no expectation. And they come and they sit down. Oh, God Almighty. But train up a child in the way they should go. You have a church that the adults sit down and say, I've done my time. It's your time. What time have you done in the presence of God? What have you told them that's coming behind you? I've done my time. It's your time. But have you showed me? Master Tendal Moshata. What's your expectation for God? What's your expectation for yourself? Naaman had an expectation. He went to the king. Well, this little girl that was the maid of his wife said, Master, uh, if you could go back to Israel where I'm from, I know there's a prophet there. I know there's a prophet in the house. He says there's a prophet there and he will make you whole. He can prophesy over you and he'll make you whole. I watched something tonight as I stand there and he said it's a spoken word. And then I said thank you Jesus for confirming it. Because although he went with his gold, his silver, his change of clothes, he went all prepared and he went with even a recommendation, a letter from the king. When he expected, he showed up at, at uh, Elisha's door. Ah, God Almighty, expect this man when he knocks. He expects Elisha to come out and say, how are you? I heard you're a violent man. I heard that you have done many things. Oh, God Almighty. And he expects to be esteemed on high. But guess what? Elisha sent a word. Said, go tell him to dip seven times in Jordan. Holy Ghost! The word was sent. The man was wrath. Oh God, he was mad. What do you think? Who do you think you are? You could not even come out and meet me and tell me. Could at least lay your hand on me. Elijah. To me, Elijah is like, I don't need to see you. I know the God that I serve. And I say, go down to Jordan River and dip seven times. You know what happens when you come into the house of God sometimes? You expect because you expect God to work a certain way. And the preacher didn't call you and lay a hand on you. You go home and you didn't get your blessing. You came and you left the same way. But thank God there was someone who said, Master, if the man has told you, the prophet has told you to do something great, you'd have done it. But he gave you something simple to do. Sometimes we expect God to move and swing on the chandeliers and he's saying to you, oh, just kneel down right here, my son. Wait until I speak to you. Oh God, and you're saying, God, I want to see your legs swinging on those chandeliers. And he's saying, kneel down right here, my son, and wait until I show up. People of God, when you come into the presence of God, you don't come with a preconceived notion, but come with a heart of worship. Come with a heart of understanding who God is. Because I'm glad that somebody, his servant, could have stopped him and said, Master, do what the prophet says you should do. The man was like, is there no other river? than dirty Jordan. My God Almighty, who know that God will dip you in the most mud and dirty water and you shall come out whiter than snow. He doesn't need a pool to clean you up. He can make the vilest sinner clean. You come into the presence of God Glory to God. You cannot even express your expectation. You can't express what you need from God. And that's okay. Because sometimes they say, tears is a language that God understands. But even in a marriage, you got to talk. To make it work, you have to communicate. And you come into the presence of God, and you cannot even pray for five minutes. 
Not even five minutes you can't communicate with God. You can't express to God, this is how I'm feeling. He knows what he just wants you to come in a close relationship with him and say, God, this is where I'm at. You come in and you pretend that you don't have leprosy. You know what I realized? The problem was with Naaman. You think that it wasn't that Naaman needed healing. Pride! I was too much of a great man to go dip in dirty Jordan. You could not even come out and introduce yourself to me. Pride has taken over. Young people, don't carry the way they used to. And I'm not saying the Holy Ghost only come when you're here. But I, I can guarantee you, some of them don't do it at home either. They don't do it at the gym. They don't do it at work. They don't do it at school. And then when you come here, you're still not doing it. So when do you expect to receive the Holy Ghost? Bishop, I hear you say the Holy Ghost needs to come back. The Holy Ghost is here. You know the problem. Why they're not receiving it the way they should. Lack of expectation. You expect everyone else to meet your expectation. But you don't meet any other. A lot of people in church, they try to negotiate your life. They try to negotiate your life with God. But their life is so messed up and need a purification. And yet they come into the presence of God full of leprosy. But yet they're looking at you. Why is he sitting down? Why is he doing this? Why is he doing that? Why is he doing that? But yet there is something on you that needs to be cleansed. Negotiate with God for anyone else because on that day you will have to stand before God and no one else. I can pray on your behalf, I can guide you, but you must reach that place where you are willing to submit to God. Pastor, you cannot take them into heaven. You cannot take them into heaven. Guess what? Because they think that they can negotiate everyone else's life. People of God, if we're going to get restoration, you must resist the temptation of bringing everyone else into your deformities. Into your leprosy behavior. You come to church and because you have no expectation and you think church is born and you think it's all hypocrite and you think and you think and you think then you catch it the rise of the whole church everybody's a hypocrite everybody is born everybody oh god almighty it's between you and god my friend it's not about anyone else but guess what they try to drag everyone else into their deformities because you didn't enjoy church, it didn't mean that I didn't get a lot from it. Because you came with no expectation doesn't mean that I didn't have one when I walk in here. There's a level that you must reach that when you have an experience with Christ, then God will change your expectation. You need a relationship with Him. There's certain things I don't talk about, but I'm saying because I've been there, and I know the God that I serve, and understand the God that I serve. Young people, I've been to that place. Oh, glory to God. Where I stood in the hospital room, 
And I stood there and watched them do CPR on my daughter. Watch the flat line until the nurse look around when they want the, can we stop now? And I had to say, it's all right. Thank you, Jesus. But with that experience, I realized that my expectation from God is that if the Lord giveth, the Lord can take. Amen. And if you give me this one and you take it back, you better have another plan. But the story didn't stop there, church. And I want to tell you today why or tonight why you need an expectation when you walk into the presence of God. For my son that's here tonight, my wife and I, at this birth, it wasn't something that we planned for. The first one, we planned it to the T. To the T! We had the names, we had everything. And God messed it up. He messed it up to the fact that even death. And I came back to God and I kneeled down. And I was trying to be strong for my wife and my family. But I came back to God because of that experience. And I said, God, what plans do you have for our lives? And as I stood there saying, this time around, I can tell you, as we did not plan, my wife not even knew the exact date. She tried to calculate it. She don't know that exact date. And I said, because God don't want you to know the exact date. Because when we sat there one day, or I was outside cutting the grass, my wife got pregnant again. Before we even know that she was pregnant, somebody ran right into her back of the van. Try to take her out. She was taking up her cell phone and she wasn't paying attention at the stoplight. My wife called me and she said, she said to me, I'm in an accident. And I said, what? She said, someone was trying to bend down and take up their cell phone and they just run right into my back. And I left what I was doing and I went there. We went to the doctor. And the doctor said, are you pregnant? We said, no. No. And the doctor went through their checklist. And they gave her some medication for cramps and muscle cramp. And we went home. A few weeks later, my wife came back to me. She said, uh, I don't feel okay. She said, I think I'm pregnant. And then she took the test. And she realized she was pregnant. The story didn't end there. The devil thought, that's not good enough. I have to try again. And the devil come again this time and he hit her with preeclampsia. High blood pressure. Knock it high so ambulance have to rush her to the hospital. And when they say, every time they say, we're going to take this child out, Jesus said, not yet. Not yet. Because we have went through that experience before. And we knew what it was when they deliver a child prematurely. But God said, not yet. And every time the doctors look on the ultrasound and they can't understand. And she called me at work and they said, they're going to deliver the baby today. And then God said, not so. And they go the next day. And that wasn't enough with the high blood pressure. The doctors came in. And she had one nurse, and I'm just giving you that experience. What brings you to that expectation with God? My wife is someone who will read everything. She will pay attention. And the nurse came in to give her medication. She said, that's not the medication I'm supposed to be getting now. And we knew another nurse there. I said, call that nurse. Call Sharon and ask her what's going on. She said, do you want me to call the head nurse? She almost killed you with a different medication. The devil wasn't satisfied with the first attempt. I was outside cutting the grass. And I was cutting the grass. And the Holy Ghost said, go inside. Strip your wife naked as the day she was born. And anoint her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. 
Ah, God Almighty, something that I could not do in the presence of the saints. Oh, God, but I knew that although God says it, sometimes when God speaks, it looks, why you want me to go and go strip a naked pregnant woman? It doesn't line up in your mind. But when I stopped the lawnmower and I went inside dock and I anointed her as God wanted me to. I can tell you what happened in the end. That baby where's Jason? Is Jason inside? That's my son over there. That experience that God has brought me through. Teach me how. I have an expectation when I come into the presence of God to lift my hands and magnify Him. He had to bring me down there to take me back up. But I did not complain even then. I go to that grave and I say thank you, Jesus. You think I'd go to the grave and I'd weep and I'd mourn and I'd I just stand over that grave at Christmas time and say, Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, her birthday? Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, every special occasion? Thank you, Jesus. Even in death, God, you still teach. Naaman could have missed his blessing, his cleansing, because things weren't done the way he expected it to be done. Today, God is expecting you to walk into his house with a renewed mind and praise. He does not expect you to come and sit down and wait for someone to wind you up. If some of you use batteries in the house of God, Doc, you better buy more. The church has become a place where we think that we have to bring in flashy dances. We have to bring in... You have to bring in the rollerblades. Oh, God, and I have to dance you happy. And I have to sing you happy. But where is that place? Where is that place? My family went through. But I can tell you that even my wife today, she can rejoice. Many times people say, why do you give such a sad testimony? But if you ask her, she will testify and she will give God praise even now. We have made it one that we lament over. Many times we lament over a situation and we forget God. He can change any situation. But we walk into the presence of God. We are Mr. So-and-so. Oh God, he's a mighty man. He's led the war before. He come in a suit. Oh God Almighty, how dare you come in front of the presence of God and think that he has to go your way. It's not about you. You better start taking yourself out of the equation. I said, we planned it to the T. And he said, I don't want it that way. Your way, you get the praise. You can tell me the night. You can tell me everything. You can tell me to the T. I don't want it your way. You messed it up. God is going to mess up some people's situation. Mess you up to the point where he's going to put you in dirty garden to make you clean again. Because you come with a preconceived notion and no expectation. You come, you think church is boring. You criticize the pastor. You criticize the bishop. You criticize the elder. You criticize your brother. You criticize everything. But Naaman, you are the one that's full of leprosy. 
you are the one that needed a healing, but yet you are the one that's angry with everyone else. People of God, what about we start putting that mirror on ourselves and say, I need help, God. I need you, Lord. I need thee every hour. Most holy God. I believe that the church will be restored. I believe that God is going to do a new thing. He's going to bring back the things that the conqueror has eaten. The palmerworm, the locust, many of you, God Almighty, because of the experience, you come into the presence of God sometime. You're broke financially. I don't need you to tell me. Don't tell me. But God can do it. God can do it, church. The problem is you come with a preconceived notion and no or low expectation. Change that expectation that when I walk into the presence of God, it's about me and God. It's one and one. God cannot negotiate heaven for you. God cannot preach you into heaven. No, Bishop! And don't let them fool you, young people, that every young people need and every youth need, they have to do something great to entertain you in the presence of God. I'm saddened about how I see some church going with trying to entertain and try to... They go to the limit of hell, you could say. Just to get a full church. They couldn't care what is coming. They couldn't care what happened. As long as I have a full church and I have a lot of tithes, you do what you please. But young people, no one can negotiate for you and God. I'm telling you, find that relationship with God. Find that place in your heart where you know who God is. No man can bring you to heaven. And no man can take you out of heaven. It's all come down to you. Listen, I'm not saying nobody is perfect. No one is perfect. Nobody is perfect. Moses was a great leader, but he was a fighter. That man could fight. Noah built an ark that saved many people. But Noah was still a drunkard. So we all have faults. Abraham was the father of many nations. God Almighty. But he was a deceiver and a liar. David was a man after God's own heart. But he do the unthinkable that many would kill him for. So don't think that it's true perfection that God expects you to just walk in and you're going to be perfect. There's a process that you must go through, but you need to have an expectation. You need an expectation. Tomorrow is not promised to any man. So don't come thinking that, you know what, I can just come into the presence of God Sunday upon Sunday, and then I'll just enter heaven. Church, it is not so. I have taken that stand that before I jump through every single sermon, I'd rather put someone else to preach. Because many times we come into church and the people jump through dock and they didn't hear one word you say. The music harps and they didn't hear one word you say. They come in the same way and they leave the same way. Well, I believe that when you walk into the presence of God, there's a change. There's a change. There's a change. And I believe that tonight, as you see Doc put the healing chair there, Doc, many of them that sat in that chair had no clue. They had no clue. But because Doc say come, they just run and sit. But by faith, if they start understanding...
that it's a spoken word, that that's how they're healed. It's not the cheer, but it's the process. Young people tonight, I urge you, find that place with God, that relationship with God, where your experience can match with your expectation. Because many of us come in, we have either no expectation or low expectation. They said, you know, I'll go there. Expect the worst and hope for the best. What type of expectation are you walking into the presence of God with? It's going to be the same anyway. Tonight, God is saying, there's a day coming when he's going to put an end to it. It's not the same. Marriage is changing. The school is changing. The workplace is changing. Everywhere you go, they're bombarding God out of it. So if you come into the house of God and bombard God out, I'm done. If you come with no expectation and lock God out of where he's supposed to be, you're in trouble. If you come and without an expectation for God to do something for you, and you expect everyone else to do something for you. Oh God, come one Sunday and there's no music. It seems like church can't move. Church, when did you get so dependent on the earthly things? No, many of you right now are saying, you know what, stop. I know, 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 I know. But I can tell you, Doc, you'll see a difference. When they walk into the house of God with an expectation, the service will feel different. The worship will be different. Everything about them will be different. You think you have to come in here and complain and, and preach about dressing every Sunday? It's because some people don't have an expectation for even themselves. They don't have one for themselves. They don't have one for God, so they just do whatever they want. But I promise you, saints, take that experience and find that expectation. And when you come into the presence of God, you put the two together and you worship Him. God bless you tonight. In Jesus' name.